Happy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean. We are on episode JL125 today. We're going to be doing a wax resist with watercolor, which is just essentially a fun, relaxing, kind of play around a little and enjoy yourself mixed media demo. I mean, that's not the official title, but that's what I'm saying it's going to be. So, and, um, and I think Will stands behind that. Just, yeah, he, he nodded. So, yes. Thumbs yes, thumbs up. Um, I was gone last week, as some of you were able to tell when they uploaded the video for JL124. It was an oil painting demo from start to finish. Uh, Will was kind enough to film that so that we had it running with time lapse so that we could actually get an artwork done so you guys could see it kind of from start to finish and what the thought processes are behind that. So if you missed that episode, that is up on YouTube. Is that Katie on Facebook as well? Mm -hmm. Okay. Hello. So you can check those out um, either on the Jerry's Artorama YouTube page or the Jerry's Artorama Facebook page. Um, and again, that was episode JL124. So for today, I'm going to show you some of the products we've got. And as always, you go to our website, jerrysartorama.com. You type in JL125 if you're interested in seeing any of those items that we're going to be using today um, to give them a try. A couple of them, I am going to specify what the price is as we're going over them because uh, one of the items in particular is on closeout and it's just a really awesome palette. And if you're a watercolorist, it's, it's a very inexpensive palette to have to keep in your home or even to travel with because it's actually pretty sturdy and durable. So let's go over the products real quick. Um, and then I, and, and then I'll tell you guys very briefly how the Great Day National was because I'm getting all sorts of messages and Katie's getting messages and everybody's getting messages to find out. So uh, real quick, let's look at the products. We're going to be using the Monkey O Gallery Oil Pastels the wood box set of 72. Now these are just the regular gallery oil pastels, not the extra fine, extra soft oil pastels that are more kind of the professional quality oil pastels, but these are great for students, just for playing around, perfect for mixed media and journaling and things like that. Plus it's 72 colors and it's a price that's under $50. So that's a lot of color to do a lot of fun stuff with for a very reasonable price. And it's in a wood box, so it will protect those pastels. And we've got them in open stock, so you can actually replace those as you go along. So that's one of the sets for more fine detail. Now, we're gonna be working larger, actually, on a, a 22 by 30 inch watercolor sheet. So just for some fun and for some bigger strokes and to kind of force me not to be all you know, refined and nitpicky, we've got the Jumbo Oil Pastel set of 36. This is under $18. It's got some metallics in it, um, and it's got a very good range of the colors that the gallery come in, but in a larger, fatter stick. So it gives you kind of some better coverage options when you're wanting to cover more area more quickly, as opposed to using those little tiny ones and running out. So. Um, that is another set that we're going to be using. Oops, keep those out so they're at the ready. Um, then we've got the Turner watercolor set of 18. They're sorted colors. It's five millimeter tubes. So they're nice little milliliter tubes, but it's a lot of color. As we've talked about before, if you've seen any of our shows with Turner, I still have one of these sets that is, um, I've still never had to squeeze extra out. I think I emptied half the tube in a porcelain palette and I'm still using it like five, six years later. So Forever. it does. So it's a, it seems like very small sizes, but a lot of uh, color or, you know, a little color goes a long way with the Turner. This set is on sale for $21.99. So it's a great way to get into a new watercolor brand without really having to make an actual investment. Um, then we've got the Paul McCormick Signature Covered Watercolor Palette Box. This thing is super thick plastic, super durable. It's got a lid so you can travel with it. Plenty of mixing room in the lid, but this is kind of the beauty of this. It's 18 wells, but these wells in the middle, you can make really large washes. So you can 
make lots of you know pigment to cover a larger area without either having to have something on the side or you know cups to actually mix it in um, and you can actually put color up at the top to do custom mixes and organize it down in that well and it won't soak those edges so these i don't even know what the what the price originally was on them but on, they're on close out for nine dollars and 99 cents and they're amazing so that's something if you're looking for you know a travel watercolor palette that's big enough to actually make some you know larger wash washes have a nice big wash well it's a great value and you can let it air dry and then just close that back up and it's perfect so that's a, a, a really nice product all right, then we've got the Polar Flow Try Me brush set of seven. I just took them out because I needed to start using them right away. So those those are uh, where you get seven different brushes for $14.29. Uh, we're using Fabriano Studio watercolor paper. It's a 140 pound cold press. It's a 10 pack. It is their, not necessarily, I wouldn't say student grade paper, but it's partial, um, um, regular like paper pulp content it's not all cotton but it's a fantastic you know paper because it does have a cotton content to it 10 sheets in a 22 by 30 inch size are 21.84 for the regular price so that's a lot of watercolor paper for a very small price um, and then we're using the Colorburst 2 inch wash brush I always thought these things were the biggest gimmick and I love it it carries so much paint and I love the long handle because rather than, you know, a little short handle where you're having to do a lot of this, it's got nice, the nice ability to, at the proper angle, release the pigment onto the paper. So, Color Burst 2 inch wash brush. All right, so, um, so I was gone for the Great Day Nationals. My puppy Ripley is nine months old and a pistol. Um, I, <laughs> I have, I, I, have owned her half brother uh, it was the first dog that I bred to and I love the personality even though sometimes it can be a little trying in the ring she showed like a rock star the first two times that we showed the third time there was bait like shredded chicken all over the ring and she thought she was at a golden corral apparently and looked like a scent hound running around sniffing the floor and wagging her tail so although everyone was entertained by it I was not so much but the other two days she showed really well her one of her litter mate brothers took winner's dog at the specialty and best of winners for a five point major which if you know nothing about dogs just think you're the mac daddy winner of the day that was it and it was really exciting for their breeders and uh and i had a really good time so lots of people from all over the world that i only get to see every few years canada australia new zealand germany there were people in droves from other countries coming to the national so it was a lot of fun and a nice break and I appreciate you guys putting up with me to have an episode where I was away and got a little bit of time, but you got something really cool out of it in return with the oil painting episode. So, so that was the trip in a nutshell. So thank you for your patience and we're back now. Um, so this is something that just with wax resist, maybe everybody's done it before when you were a kid. Uh, think Easter egg coloring. If you've ever colored Easter eggs and there was that one clearish whitish crayon, remember those in the little kits? And you would draw on the egg and then when you dunk it in the dye, it resists the dye and you get those kind of cool little designs and then you can wipe that wax off after it's dry. Well, it's the same concept, only we're applying it with watercolor instead of dye. You could use other liquid mediums with this probably as well potentially to varying degrees of success. It's something that you would want to test on smaller sheets of paper, but most water media should resist the, um, the oil pastels pretty easily. So I don't know if, Katie, can you show an above of this? This was just the little image that we did for kind of advertising the episode. And it was a jellyfish that I'd seen mm -hmm. with some um, little, you know, I don't even know what the little things were. Yeah. Little, the little light up things. Well, they were like, you know how the little, like kind of flotsam and jetsam in the water, little weird creatures that are tiny, that kind of glow around them, huh? I think they're called poppies. Alrighty then. That's what it is. Okay, so they're things that apparently they know about. So, 
So I just kind of had some fun trying it out, trying some different, you know, lighter colors, darker colors, just to kind of see how it did and get a little bit of an image for advertising episodes. So we're going to take kind of the fun of that and get a little bit kind of higher octane with it, deeper colors, and uh, try a couple things out. So in looking today for images that um, really seemed more, um, I guess, a better contrast. So we would have something that's very light for our wax resist part and then something that's, you know, darker for our watercolor to do. I came up with a couple ideas. So there were clouds with sunlight behind them that I thought were kind of pretty that might be kind of fun. Um, and keep in mind this is something because they're oil pastels. This isn't like super high tech, super, super tight, super, um, you know, realistic rendering. It's going to be like really loose and fun. I loved these candles. If you can, sh yeah, you're working on it. Yay. Because that's like really bright and then the really nice dark contrast. I like how pretty that is. And then I also like the clouds. So I was thinking maybe we could try one of each. What do you guys think? Start with a candle because that seems a little quicker, right? Than the sky, and then we'll give the sky a go. So um, let's see. If we put this, what do you think, Katie? If we put that, if I put that up there, they can see the candle, but it's kind of tucked out of the way so that I have I a little bit of room to work. No, 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 I agree. I agree. All right, so let's get some of this stuff out. So uh, with this, this isn't as. Um, as detailed, so I'm gonna try these larger uh, gallery, the big jumbo pastels, and it's got some nice light colors, so I'm gonna use some of those light colors. Now, uh, I don't know, my screen is, is the color is a little wonky on it, but this is like a super bright, really sunshiny, happy yellow, so we're gonna just kind of put that in there. And as you can see, I'm talking, I'm wanting this to be nice and loose and fun. And this is cold pressed, so the paper's got a bit of texture to it, right? So, I'm going to do that. And then as this gets darker. I definitely didn't see you put the paper down. And I was just looking down at the camera and thought you were drawing on the table. <laughs> yes. And had a little. <gasps> <laughs> or so you thought. <laughs> yeah, that might not be the best resist. <laughs> okay, so um, this gets darker as it kind of fades away. The color is a little more neutral, so we're going to... Alright. Then we've got... We could do one of two things. I mean, if you wanted to take that wick that's there, and actually do that with the oil pastel, you could. I think I'm gonna leave that as a, um, yeah, that's gonna be kind of hard to see it. Probably better suggest it a little with a with a dark color because that could be kind of tricky to see where my lights are. I'm just gonna do that and then we'll kind of work from there. Um, that is crazy super yellow right there. Let's put that on there for where it's burning. color around it. Now, if you pick up some of the color, you can always take a palette knife and scrape it back. I'm not going to deal with that so much today because this is supposed to be just quick and immediate for us doing this because we'd rather get through a couple of these than, than just one. So uh, that's something you could do though. Go a little bit slower. Anything that gets darker in there, you know, pick that up and actually be able to, um, to pick up any little kind of overlapping of color where the light gets in the dark. Now, I know you guys can't see the white that I'm putting on here, so you're just gonna have to trust me. We'll see it when we when we work on it in a minute and add our... Uh... Add our other color to it here. Now, I like this. There's this kind of really bright glow right here. I'm going to put some of that there and then kind of fade it out. And then I'll paint some color over it to kind of get that final look 
to it. I like a little bit of orange up there. Putting that on its side. So some of the color will show, but then some of that will show, will kind of the paper will peek through with whatever colors I do under that, okay? All right, so, and with this, I can see kind of a little highlight right here. I think I'll try to just get that in the watercolor only and not worry about it with this, but I will take this little bit of blue where that candle's burning kind of hot. All right. All right, so we're ready to give the watercolor a try here, guys. Katie nodded. <laughs> yes, do it. What you said. Do it. All right. Um, I think I can put that right there. Let's move this. Hopefully we have most of that. All right, so at first I'm going to take this and use the, the largest round I've got just so I don't have so much going on. We'll switch to that big color burst in a minute. So I'm gonna go in here around the kind of light and we're gonna put some yellow. Let's use the color burst to get rid of that box. We don't need it need to put some bigger bunches of water in here, so. All right, just set that over there. All right. So anywhere where that oil pastel is, is going to block the absorption. Now I'm going to start adding a little bit. Kind of an orange and fade this out. quite as orange as the put a tiny bit of red in here and a little bit of the burnt sienna since it's starting to get kind of Okay, now I can go over this. I'm gonna go over it. Just, just that little bit of the light yellow over the flame here. Just anywhere that this doesn't have stuff down, it's gonna attach a little bit of yellow in there. You really can't be not this cold. Mm-hmm. All right, so, um, I'm gonna pick a little violet to go along that. The black. Just so we've got a little stem for the candle. up against it. It's pretty cool. All right, so now we can start working on a kind of a background color to fade this into. Now, any kind of background color can, you you know, is fine. 
we don't have to stick to this. It's a very warm, kind of almost a reddish black. So, but because it's yellow, and you know how much I like violet with yellow. So I think we're going to make it kind of a redder violet than what it already is. So let's get a whole bunch of water here. I need a pipette. Well, I don't know if that would get it as fast as Anybody have any questions yet? No. Nope. It's just quiet out there in the peanut gallery. It is. They're all just watching the paint go down. Okay, we'll stick some red in here. All right. Yep. Got to take it with my brush. All right, first I'm going to go ahead and just put a wash on, and then we'll come back around with the color. I realized this is a lot of paper and I want that to be a lot darker. Dylan would like to know, does this particular media have to be on such textured paper? No, and probably on a hot press or something like that, where it's super smooth or even a soft press, that like Fabriano soft press, it would be much better because it would not show the texture of it if you're wanting it to look more realistic. However, I they don't have the soft press in this paper and I don't know if they did the hot press in the really large sheets so it was just kind of what what there was to use for it but you could I mean you could do it on um, you know a watercolor uh, like a, a illustration board that you can take watercolor on you could do it on pretty much anything and it would give kind of different looks for each varying thing it's it, it's something where it'd be great to experiment with the different types of paper and see kind of what you like it on just some scribbles and then put put watercolor over it and just kind of see what you think. So could you soak up the bead, like where it beaded up with like a dry brush, would you say? Could you do what with it? Like where it's beading up what? on top of it so that it doesn't just leave like purple beads on top. Would you soak it up with it's, like a dry it's, brush? It's, yes, you could do that. Or a sponge, like a just a, a natural sponge, it would work fine. And could you use this technique with India ink? Uh, India ink is probably not going to, I would think that that could potentially discolor it. You would want to, I was thinking about that, and acrylic ink might be kind of tricky. No stain. You, yeah, you would really want to look at it and see because that stuff will stain pretty much everything. And especially on the lighter colors, it may discolor them. But that's not to say that it might not be possible, you know? So... Again, we always encourage people to experiment here. And who knows, that stained look could work for your piece, depending That's on true. what you're doing. Right. So test first. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so with this, I'm just going back in to try a little bit darker. Yeah, that it's really reflecting the uh, water, isn't it? The light is reflecting the water because it's so wet. With the uh, would you say hold, please? I'll take hold, please. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it's really. Uh... All right, now I'm just experimenting with darkening it up some. I would like it to be a little bit darker. I apparently picked up a big clump of paint with this because I can see it in the and again you know I've just got this well I actually don't think I said I've just got the paper sitting here just so that we could switch stuff pretty quickly you could tape this down you could use a watercolor block so that it's not going to kind of pick up and move as much and you could get a lot trickier about kind of how you're applying the color. I mean, the cool thing about this is, do we have any over there? Yes, we do. What do you need? Can you get me the uh, the salt? Oh, yeah. Let's put salt on oh, it. Oh, I love salt. Yes. For something really fun with the mixed media. The box has gotten a little weird. Wet because it's so humid. <laughs> it's gross. Oh my gosh, yeah. What in the world? Okay. 
All right, so yeah, cool. now we're gonna put a little bit of salt on and see what happens. Because that could be kind of a fun little, I don't wanna put too much on. And what this does is it absorbs the moisture right alongside of it, and then once it's dry, you can dust any leftover particles off. But it'll make for really cool, oh yeah, you can see the texture starting to mm -hmm. appear. So I like it because it gives almost like a, remember the old paper where you would burn the paper edges? It kind of gives that kind of weird. Another neat technique to do with something wet like this is to take saran wrap and lay it down mm -hmm. flat and then scrunch it a little bit nice. and let it dry. And then once the paper's dry, you peel it off and you can see all the lines where the scrunches were. Nice. All right, so I'm gonna try just dry brushing this with this fan to see if I can't get some of the excess stuff off. Yeah, see that, that's dry so that picks up the color. Okay. All right, so can everybody see how well that resists that? It looked like the side shot captured it pretty well, didn't it, Katie? I'm just, I'm just taking that fan brush, I'm squeezing all the water out of it, and then going back and lifting the color back up that's beaded up on top. All right, so uh, tomorrow once we come in and this is dry, I'll, I will dust the salt off, and I will take pictures of it and put it in the group so people can see what the final kind of takeaway is with the salt after it. That work for everybody. I'm, I'm guessing that's a yes. It's a blank stare from Frida. <laughs> Anna. Hey. I know, no, we have not had enough coffee today. Trust me. Trust me. All right, so we've got cloud formations now. Um, do we want to just do the really blue one or do we want to do the one with more of the yellow and stuff around it too? What do you guys blue. Think? The blue. Just the blue, blue, the blue, 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 the blue, blue, the blue, blue, the blue, 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 blue. All right. Let me kind of clear out. Ah, paper towels. Our paper towels aren't up here. Yes. Just to, I'm just gonna clean out a little bit of some splashes in the the palette. So I've got room to do my blues, huh? I yes. They walk away very easily. Take this and carefully put it over here. Thank you, ma'am. All right, now as long as I don't back into that, we should be good. <laughs> Frida, you laugh like you know better because you do. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna clean a little bit of extra pigment out of here so we don't have any transfer over to when we do our blue. So, now this is where it's going to get trickier because we've got whites, right? So, that we're going to be using for our clear clouds. Can you do this from the side, Katie? Which way do you, would you, th you think it'd be better for me to start and work from with the white? It's gonna be really hard for them to see the white. It's just gonna be hard because of the nature of white on white. You'll just have to lay the white down first and then we can see it after you add after in the yeah. color. Like magic. 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 Like when you wrote secret messages as a kid. Mm -hmm. Secret you messages. Trying to make salt out of these rags. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, I'm going to use a little bit of gray to form the inside of my clouds just so I can kind of see where they're going to be at. And I'm just using this as a reference, not so much a, this has to look just like this because we don't really have time to sit and make this look like this. It's just to see what we've got for this. Come on. 
Mm -hmm. Kind of be, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because this is a gray. It was so I could kind of tell where my clouds and stuff were going to be edged. I Otherwise, might I might. It looks like an April Fool's joke. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, the cool thing about this is you could put some color down and then put white over it and then resist other colors. Or even some of the oil pastel brands that have a clear blender. Not all of them do, but some of them have clear blenders. So you could just order clear blenders and actually do the same thing over that more color that's already dry. And that makes me want to do it right now. <laughs> I can kind of see some of this. All right, we're switching hands. While we're here, does anybody have any questions from the episode last week that they've thought of that while I'm doing this, might as well fire away anything. If anybody's got any questions from that oil painting episode, feel free to, uh, to say. Now this to me is going to look like more like an abstract kind of painting. Just because there's no way in no until we put the color on where all this white and stuff is. I think this would make fun journal pages where you just use light colors and then put randomly put some uh, darker watercolors over it to see kind of how it goes. Okay, so now we could color the inside of the clouds with um, darker colors if we wanted. We could come in and trace some edges. We could do all sorts of fun things. So I think what we're going to do is um, something I tried with the other thing. I'm going to take a really light blue and I'm going to kind of do a little bit of a cloud outline from where I can see my stuff going. So oil pastels come in various hardnesses, um, so to speak. Does it matter if the oil pastel is softer or harder? Uh, no, the, the, okay, so the, the difference in the, what it is is the quality of the wax, right? The, the extra soft or a, or a better quality, kind of less generic, wax base they're more blendable because of it they don't oxidize where um, if you can see the color on this one see how I was able to remove kind of a skin of it that's darker and then it gets kind of white can they see that it's hard for me to tell let's see if we can do it on a okay this one you can really see it on okay so see how that's kind of looks like a really light pink Yes, sorry. Now, if I rub that, see how it's that pink and then it's really light there? Can they see that? I guess there's a shadow. Yeah, okay, you can kind of see it. That is where that's actually, the wax has come up to the surface over the pigment and clouded it. You can wipe that away on artworks um, and kind of buff it off 
and then seal it, but the extra soft don't have the same type of wax that tends to do that. So that's why some brands will be a lot more expensive than others is because they have the, you know, a little bit better quality waxes in them and, and stuff like that. Does that make sense, Frida? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. All right, so now I kind of can kind of see where my cloud outline is. Here's this little guy down here too. I just noticed that too. Okay. Um, how does it? How does everybody want to do this? Tilt that watercolor paper a little bit and see if they can catch the sheen because they're all under. I'm not quite understanding how you can see. There you go. Yes. Hold on. Let me do it on the top one. You can see even better. Right, there we go. Okay. You see, you can see the it? white there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it's just, I can just barely, I can see it because of the texture of the paper it picks up. But yeah, it's, it's hard to see. That's kind of why I put the blue around it. So as I start putting watercolor on, it's easier for me to tell. All right. Does anybody want to see any darker stuff in here with the, with those? Or should we just do watercolor only in there? What is, what's the consensus? Well, you're going to have to wait 30 seconds for it. That's fine. <laughs> While we're waiting. I'll get my watercolors. I'll start mixing some color. Yes. If you were to use this technique in a sketchbook, um, since, I mean, you could use fixative on the oil pastel, but if not, would you need some sort of protective sheet between the pages of the sketchbook so the oil pastel doesn't bleed into the next page? Yeah, I mean, you could put glycine, you could put uh, just wax paper from your kitchen. You could put just kind of whatever you really wanted to do in there. I don't think it would necessarily have to be, um, if it's a sketchbook, you know, super fine, you know, archival kind of, you're just wanting to keep it from sticking to each other, you know, so either a shot of the oil pastel fixative in there or, um, you know, on the open sketchbook or just wax paper or something will keep it from picking up. Probably parchment paper would do the same, don't you think, Katie? Mm -hmm. So. All right. Ooh, could you use, have you used like a turpentine to blend the colors before you did the watercolor? No, because then that's going to be in your paper and then oh. with watercolor, that's not a good idea. Gotcha. So, How? and the more you're blending it, the more you're breaking down that wax too. Well, they were just thinking for a more smooth transition on the flame. Yeah, I mean, you could do, you could just do that only with, um, that's a, a great, I mean, you could just use solvent, however, then you've got solvent in a paper. I mean, although these aren't, um, you know, drying oils that are acidic, you've got solvent in a paper and that could potentially damage it over time. You could also use a chamois cloth or a blending stump mm -hmm. to yeah. smooth it into the paper more. Mm -hmm. And they're saying, let's just go watercolor. Just watercolor. Sounds like a plan. All in right. In general, how light fast are these oil pastels that you're using today? Um, I don't know if there's um, light fastness ratings on it, to be quite honest. These are just, these are not the professional set by any means. These were just the kind of lower price point set for playing with, for having fun, for, I mean, but I've used them on other artwork and I've not, I mean, I've had that one out for, in my studio that's very bright for, what, three years now, four years maybe? Yeah. And I don't think it's that the colors have changed at all in it. You know, I mean, I, I don't think they're probably, unless it's fluorescence, of course, I don't think they're really dealing with fugitive pigments. I'm sure pigments for oil pastels, because you've got a lot of binder, are probably not that bad price-wise. So I doubt that there's a whole ton of fugitive ones in it. Could you use a candle as your wax resist? Um, I don't know why not. That's probably going to have a lot of similar uh, waxes to these in it uh, but it's going to be harder and you're probably not going to be able to this is softer for kind of blending kind of really pushing into the paper texture um, but again if you've got a candle experiment use scrap paper don't use your you know $25 a sheet you know Italian watercolor paper or anything but the, nobody is at your house saying you can't and if they are Tell them to go outside and yell at someone else. All right. See the little cloud is pushing the stuff off. Oops. Gotta put some. 
more. Got enough water in this. I guess I should have started with a, a wash first on there. Oops, laying some water down. See how, you, can you guys see it beating up in those places? It's beating up in here. Let's take a little piece of paper towel and Are they being silly? Is it Patty again? No, she's not on here. I haven't seen her. Mm -hmm. Everybody see those transitions between the it really beats up on that edge, doesn't it? It's kind of cool though. I like the beads. Okay, so we want to just do the inside is watercolor, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I see, can you guys see where the, uh, where some of these little, the white's starting to kind of push back with the texture. I'm finding it all over there. That's why I outlined it, because I was really having a hard time finding where it stopped and started kind of on the edge. So if you decided that you made a mistake, could you scrape back areas and paint over them with watercolor, or you, have you sort of lost them? Uh, you're not going to probably get it all out now. Can you repeat the question? Um, you're asking if, with the oil pastel, if you make a mistake, mm -hmm. could you scrape it back? Um, if you're maybe on a smoother surface, you might be able to get some of it, but I, I don't think you'd probably be able to get all of it where, where the watercolor would cover it. But you know what you could do? Theoretically, um, acrylic gouache probably would paint on top of it. Right, if you can kind of scrape enough off, mm -hmm. you could probably salvage it that way. That would be worth a shot. That I think that, that I would actually probably give that a try and just see if it was me. this I'm just adding some darkness into the cloud with some violet there's a little bit of black in there I'm kind of swirling it so to try to keep from having so much brush stroke to it
really messy. All right then, there's my fan brush. We're gonna put the fan brush down, there it is. Now, if, for those of you who signed up for the Turner acryl gouache um, samples, they, those all were mailed out last week. Was it Thursday or Friday, ladies? Friday. Friday. <laughs> Friday. Lots of people have been saying they've been getting them. So okay, good. If you don't have them, they are on the way. Yes. They are mailed from North Carolina, so if you're, you know, on the West Coast, probably going to be a little later to get that to you, but it should come. So... So you will have those samples. Um, they come with a white and a black because those are the two best ways to really see what the opacity is for those. Whether it's uh, that, that boy, it's it's it's, it's like Velvet black. Elvis black painting yeah. background, um, and then uh, the white is is something that can cover a lot of other colors and things like that. So those are, are the samples that were sent. So you'll actually be able to try them in advance, and then if you've got questions about any of it, we'll be there and we'll be painting the eye with the smart set, and we'll be able to field those in real time. So, paint along. Hmm? Paint along. Mm-hmm. Now I'm just adding some more pops of color because this seems kind of boring blue. Mine looks like a storm cloud. I'm just saying. Doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It's not a happy little cloud. No, apparently not. It's angry. I kind of like that. I like that. Now, as I said, you could go as fast as you want and just make something more kind of abstract and lighter and fun like this. You could go slower and be really meticulous and really concentrate on this and possibly get some more kind of um, a realistic look out of it. Hmm. There's so many people out there. It's in Seattle today, so. Oh, so people should be getting them yeah, soon then. Wow. I can't God. believe. That's crazy. Friday afternoon. Yeah. Yeah. We dropped them off, so. Apparently, yeah, <laughs> apparently the uh, plane was leaving for the West Coast or something. Yeah. That's crazy. Were they set priority or just regular, regular no mail? I think, huh. regular. I think the envelopes you use are technically priority. But mm -hmm. the postage we put on it wasn't. No idea. I don't know. People are going to get them though. But they're already getting yeah. them though. So. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, I'm gonna go into the wax part just a little. See what that pulls up. If there's any spots that didn't have coverage. Any questions? We're starting to kind of wrap this up. So next week is the Turner episode, and we will be doing an eye with it, and what we'll do is it's not going to be a direct paint along. It won't be start to finish then. I'll probably set it up more like a cooking show where we'll get to specific steps and kind of do different techniques to get to the other steps, just because an hour isn't really time to get a super detailed eye done. All right, Katie? No. So, um... But, but we'll work on different techniques and different steps in it. So, um, so that will be what we're doing next week with 
all of this. Um, any other questions, ladies? Um, I think so. I think Just a lot so. of people saying they got their gouache. Mm -hmm. Good. That's awesome. Good, good, good. Well, they'll be ready for next week then. Um, if you've never tried acrylic gouache, if you've got synthetic brushes, I would recommend you use those because they'll stay cleaner because acrylic gouache dries much at a much faster rate than even traditional acrylic. So sometimes before you know it, it can actually have kind of filled the filament in your brush. Uh, synthetic, you can always um, soap up and, you know, get it out a lot easier than natural hair. Natural hair will get down in all those nice little kind of rough pores and stuff in your brush and get stuck. So just before you go ruining a really nice brush, word to the wise. Um, Polar Flow, the ones we're using today for this demo, the, the red ones with the white um, synthetic, actually that's my favorite to use with the acrylic wash. I don't know why. There's something about that filament. The Polar Flow that cleans super Every easy. Is, yeah. so smooth. Super so easy smooth. and there's filberts and there's flats and there's rounds. So to me that's just the um, the ideal brush for those. Uh, Golden Tack line works pretty well. Like um, the Busty brushes, um, the Polar Mimic flow, Squirrel though. work really well as well. But I, the Polar Flow for some reason that's... If, if you have to buy one like economy brush off our site. Yes. I agree. Are just I those. I agree. It's a lot of bang for your buck. Yeah. I have a question. Yes. Uh, Cindy wants to know if you like working on glass or metal better for oil. Which do you find easier? On glass mm -hmm. with or oil metal. paint. Yeah. Um, either okay. So glass, acrylic gouache will stick. A lot of other things won't stick. It's just not designed unless it's um where it's been sandblasted, where it gives it a texture, there's not enough texture to hold it. Um, metal can be the same thing, depending on the, on you know, whether it's oxidized already or not, or whether it's super baby but smooth or not. Um, you know, you want to give it some texture, like with our Lumicomp panels, I've painted an oil on that. However, I did take, um, the um, steel wool and create a nice texture so that it had some tooth to grab on and adhere. Uh, you can always gesso things too, but with glass, you're limited to what can go on there. For some reason, acrylic gouache paints on anything. It sticks. It's 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 like. I just painted my cell phone case with it. That's awesome. Huh? Yeah, it's just. Um, I mean, in on your nail polish on anything you can and and it's um even on fabric um i i have a black skirt that i wear her all the time that has had so much other paint on it i wait till it dries and then i cover it with the jet with the jet black and you can't see the other paint no one knows how much paint's on it other than me hey, so yes um for next week yes we talked about the set that we're using the black and white you said you're going to use the polar flow brushes what kind of paper slash surface would you recommend for the people that are playing along um you can use on regular paper if you gesso it just so it doesn't absorb in we're doing um panels i believe the I da vinci would, panels as long as they do something that's not going to like super thin or bend any because it Right. It's not as strong as acrylic. Right. Like it's it's something curving. it's something because of the amount. Okay, so a gouache, acrylic gouache, has a lot of resin, or it does not have the resin in it that regular acrylic does. It gives it that shine, but pigment. it's super loaded with pigment. Rather than the resin, kind of with a traditional acrylic, the light being able to come through that resin to then bounce back, kind of the refraction of the pigment you're like super pigment heavy and just enough resin to hold it together. So on stretched canvas, on um, thinner paper, you don't want to use that because you can crack it if you paint thick at all. And you do need to thin it with water to make it brushable because if you paint it thick, even on a hard surface, it can crack. Will so they need to varnish it afterwards? With the acrylic wash, it's not the worst idea. You want to varnish anything anytime because paint and surfaces are porous and you don't want that with even just dust, dirt, grime, you know, stuff like that. So 
So do it like on a panel or a heavier watercolor paper where you put maybe two or three coats of gesso on to help kind of firm that up and tape it to a board and then be very careful in your handling afterwards. I've done it on paper and I don't have any problems with it. And in fact, I think I've got a big um, one on watercolor paper that I'm gonna bring in that was done with the metallics. And that's just been mounted to a foam core surface so it makes it nice and sturdy. Yes, Amanda. Can you talk about how we don't have the sample sets anymore? And But ah. if they are within, it'll take four business days to get to them at, say, order it today. Well, oh, do we have like a there are set? four business days until our, our episode. Um, we do sell them individually. Okay. And we do go to the, um, yes, all those check. samples, it was first come, first serve. And it took a, about a week or two for everybody to sign up and do it. So there were only 500 there's no more but if as Amanda is saying if you're in closer proximity to the warehouse which is North Carolina you can actually order a couple samples and potentially get them in time you may want to, don't you think it might be good for them to call customer service to verify that placing the order um you could we also on our shipping info page have a map that shows how long it would take okay to get to you um based on color zones so okay. that's also an option. Okay. So yeah. The tubes themselves are not. They're like two dollars yeah. a piece. Yeah. No, they're, they're not very inexpensive. Either, so, they're... so yeah. So there's still a way to play along if you like. Um, it would just you'd want to get in your order quick to make sure yeah. it could like if it went in, potentially if it went in today it could go out tomorrow potentially. Potentially. So. Um, so anyway. So and if not. Watch and see. I mean, the the smart set is priced really inexpensively. Twenty five nineteen, I want to say. And it's got brushes. It's got it's got everything but a painting surface in it. It even has a palette cleaner I love and that. a palette in the lid. So, mm -hmm. so that's what I'm going to be using because it's just the simple set and it's got the color mixing cards. So if you're not sure about how to mix specific colors, it's the official cheat sheet. You will be able to figure out how to mix the colors. So. All right, are there any more questions about this in particular? So um, so this is fun. It's just something loose and enjoyable to do. You could really go overboard and tighten it up and make it, you know, much more figurative than this. Um, this is something that would be fun with, for kids to do, to draw and then paint over. It's just yeah. kind of a relaxing thing. That's why I chose it from coming back from the Nationals because I was there for 10 days and I was really tired, so. Um, but, um, all right, well, I think then we've covered this all. Um, we will see you next week for painting with the acrylic gouache. The turn of acrylic gouache episode will be painting an eye. So, and I am not sure what the, um, do you think I should put Katie the eye up a day in we advance in the group? It. Okay. They can sketch it. They can sketch it or so you out. need to. Okay. So all right. I'll put it up Monday morning, Monday by noon Eastern Standard Time for next week. Okay. It'll be in the Jerry's live group. If you're not a member, you need to go ahead and become a member of the group because that's where we put reference photos that we've used. That's where we put finished projects uh, once they get done. It's just a really good community anyway. But even if you just are there to troll and get your images, mm -hmm. we're cool with that. So, so that's on Facebook, go to groups, Jerry's live, sign up. You have to answer the question and then the girls will approve you. So if you guys can, can do like an approval, mass approval on Monday, yeah, I'm just, on okay. So, um, so I'll put that in by 12 noon so that you can get it drawn and you'll be ready to go and we'll go from there. All right. Okay. Well, thank you guys for tuning in and we will see you next week. Take care.